You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. you. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And you're listening to episode number 370. Thank you very much, as always, for hanging out with us. We do appreciate it. If you're thinking about starting a drone business, now couldn't be a better time. No, that, that really means that now is a really good time. Uh, it's also a good time for Drone You because we've got 25% off annual membership. And membership means you get access to all the courses, all the material, the online community, what everyone talks about, and so much more. So check out DroneUsales.com. And if you love the podcast, you love the information here, you are going to be... Mm, blown away. Absolutely. One of the coolest things, actually, we haven't really talked about it much is, at least I think, is the monthly Q&A for members only, where members get on a webinar with you That's right. and just shoot questions at you. That's right. And it's actually really cool because people learn from other people's questions mm. and uh, it's a really good time. Awesome. So, anyways, just another benefit for, we're doing for that today. members. Yes, we are doing that today. Oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm ready to go. All right. Well, let's get into today's question, which is brought to you by Drone You. Duh. Kidding. Anyway, let's hear the question. All right. Hey, guys. It's Kyle from Minnesota. Thanks for the great podcast. Keep up the hard work. I love listening to the podcast in the morning on the way to work. Here's my question. We've been flying some golf courses, and I noticed the P3P veers to the right when I try and fly a straight line down the fairway. Not sure if this is normal or if there's something going on with the compass or something else wrong with it. Any advice would be great. Thanks again, guys. Keep up the hard work. Keep up the hard work, Rob. Doing awesome. Good. Kyle, thank you for the question. Kyle's been with us for a long, a long time and just really appreciate He's been a member for a long, long time. Very long time. Yeah, yeah. we really appreciate it. Uh, Kyle, good to hear from you, bud. I will say uh, this could be one of a few problems. Uh, one of them could be magnetic declination. But we have to remember here that even no matter the drone, there is a margin of error in the compass. So we are going to move a few feet left or right or forward or back uh, within the margin of error of the compass. You know, mm -hmm. with the Phantom 3, uh, the Inspire 1, you know, we've got a meter really in hover accuracy. Right. And that's not our vertical hover accuracy accuracy. That is our horizontal hover accuracy. Well, as you know, a meter is actually a significant a significant distance, especially when you're trying to fly a straight line. Mm -hmm. So if you are trying to fly a straight line and you move a foot left and then a foot right and then a foot left, you are within the margin of error of the compass. So this is another reason why I teach people all the time, you've got to learn to fly in attitude mode. Right. If you're, if you're going to want smooth, straight lines, if you're going to want you know, nice cinematic arcing reveals, you know, if you want smooth, yawless motion, you've got to fly in attitude mode. Is it more difficult? Absolutely. But guess what? Once you master it, it will not be a problem for you anymore. That's like riding a bike. You can and, always... And you'll be that far ahead of everybody else. That is very true. That is very, very true. Something we talk about in the book. Um, but anyway, that being said, Kyle... Um, I would be using attitude mode, and I would, uh, you know, again, be using FPV. This is something I taught uh, one of the students, Tyson, at the subject tracking classes. When you are learning to fly very straight lines, mm -hmm. you know, it's very difficult to film very, very well without FPV. Um, you have got to be looking at the edges of your framing to see where your movement is because you, you can make slight changes with mm -hmm. your roll just by watching the edges of your screen and watching just the subtle changes. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing, too, I had to teach at that subject tracking class is that when you do find yourself floating left or right, you really, really need to practice 
not overcompensating the other way. Sure. Because that ruins a shot just as much as floating ruins a shot. Right. So, so you've got to really work on that touch. Yes. That's, that's Which takes practice. Absolutely. It takes practice. Um, and again, you know, I think that the only way you're going to get really straight lines is if you've got, you know, RTK GPS mm-hmm. um, and you've got, uh, you know, six uh, motors instead of four. So, so what can you even get that GPS on? Uh, the RTK GPS is available on the Matrice 600. Okay. And we may see it with the Inspire 2 in Ooh, September. that's the hope, huh? This what, what speculation. Shh. Quiet, quiet. So this doesn't necessarily indicate that something's wrong with Kyle's drone, is what you're saying? Yes. Uh, I don't think anything would be wrong with it unless he crashed it and maybe he's got a compass error warning or maybe he's flying near something magnetic, some steel objects that are throwing him off. Or um, he could be flying very low Mm -hmm. between the trees. Maybe his signal's bouncing off of him, which I doubt that's really the issue, to be honest with you. Um, But again, you know, you're never really going to get a perfectly straight line. So, and I think it's a, it's a false hope to count on GPS to give you those, those straight lines. I mean, you know, I, for once, uh, I, w- I would put my drone in GPS and try to do the movement where I just go straight down and tilt the camera up. Mm-hmm. And in GPS, I get more movement than if I were just to do it in attitude mode. Sure. So you just can't count on it. Right. All right. So he's got to practice attitude. I would imagine he, he has been. We, like I said, we've known yeah. Kyle for a long time. Who knows why he was using GPS? Another thing, too, another thing too is that, you know, if you've got a crosswind and you're not blocking these shots, you're not practicing the shots in the crosswind, you're not going to get a straight line. So, you know, you really do have to practice your stick movements. And I know Kyle's been flying for a long time, so right. I'm sure he has this down, uh, Pat. But, you, again, you can't always trust GPS is what it comes down to. I mean, the solo is even worse than the DJI stuff. I mean, you want to talk about that thing floating around. Whoa. Yeah. So And unique, cool. you know, same thing. So. All right, so I'm going to – kind of switch gears. I think we've answered Kyle's question. Hopefully it gives him some things to think about and work on. But since we, he brought up golf courses, I just thought I'd ask you, kind of putting you on the spot, if you were filming a golf course, what would you, what would you do to really feature the course in sort of a unique way? Feature the course in a unique way. What would you focus on? What kind of movements might you use? What heights would you fly from? How would you do it in a kind of a unique way without giving away your top secret secrets? I don't if Creativity only comes when I'm like in the mind. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> when no, no uh, I, I think uh, what people could do is incorporate action. Uh, so incorporate people actually playing. Um, cool. I think that you could also have a lot of fun with it too. Um, you know, you could really have a lot of fun with it. And even the price that people are paying to film golf courses now varies so much because the higher upper end echelon, you know, golf courses want uh, aerials of every single hole in a tour on Mm -hmm. a DVD, you know, and like that's a $7,500 job, you know, if you're just making a promo video for the golf course, you know, that's probably like a 35 to $5,500 job, you know, very different. Sure. Um, The way that I would do it though is, I've got a couple of ideas in my head right now that I don't want to say, but the ideas I do want to say is that incorporate action. I'd be doing a lot of uh, tracking shots. So, for example, you know, and like tracking a golf course or tracking a ball that's hit. So it's tracking a ball that's hit. But the way that I would film this is that I would, you know, if if there's a guy on a tee box and my camera is, it's not perpendicular to them. It's mm-hmm. like at a maybe 45 degree or a few degrees off of perp- perpendicular. So okay. they're kind of framed up like three quarter style. Mm-hmm. And then I would slowly like maybe six inches off the grass, move the camera over the grass and then begin to elevate as the guy is going through his swing and hits the ball. And then what I would do is I would fly the whole course and I would have Sam standing at the end of the hole and literally like fly into the course and then go on my radio and be like, intern number one, can you please throw the (laughs) golf ball in five, four, three, two, one. And then literally as I'm approaching, over the drone, you see the golf ball just land right on the green and roll up to the tee. Nice. That would be an awesome shot. I have not seen anyone do that. 
I've got more secrets than that that I'm not going to divulge, but that would be one thing that I think would be really cool and no one's really done well. So Interesting. So, But the idea here is to really, because I think what everybody thinks about is you start at the tee box and you just follow the hole all the way to the green, Boring. right? And, and while I'm certainly, I'm sure there's good use for that, like you said, particularly if they want to just kind of show the whole course. That's one way to do it, but to be creative with to be creative and have fun with it. Imagine if you were like showing the golf course and a guy having a really good time, and everyone knows that golf never goes perfectly ever. Right. So like, why not in the middle of the video have some guy slice the crap out of the ball? (laughs) Well, I can do that for you. (laughs) Into a pond, and then have the splash drone bring the ball out of the water, (laughs) and then deliver it back to the tee box and drop it off. And he's like, "That's technology in golf." And then you end the. Video right there. That's right. So. so that's a bit of a parody right there, but that would be fun. I think it would be a lot of fun. That'd I mean, fun. you know, why not have fun with it? You just said be creative. So. Absolutely. Anyway, that's cool. Kyle, great question. Uh, and guys, if you have questions, go to askdroneu.com, upload them. We want to hear them. Again, do you want a GPC case? Do you want one for free? Do you like wearing costumes? No, not the weird ones, the cool ones. Do you like giving out? Weird accents? ones are okay too. <laughs> Well, it's whatever not, floats not your boat, too Rob. Weird. Not whatever too weird. floats your boat. <laughs> Those bad grandpa costumes are not working for you, buddy. That's all I gotta say. Uh, anyway, um, if you have a question, ask drone you. Costume, accent, win a case. All you gotta do is ask us a legit question. I would love business questions. Seriously, guys, we want to hear them, so please ask them. That's gonna do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. We believe that videos, images, words, and sound have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We reject indecision, confusion, and vanity, for they work against the community. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.